planned or was that just... really wasn't. I don't. Um, I really wasn't that emotional before the game. You know, it was kind of um, having my family by my side. Obviously, was you know very important for me, and one of the big reasons why I came back. You know, being close to fans, being close to family, but. Um, after the game, and I just everything just hit me, and um, announcer saying my name for one last time, and um, kind of had a little flash of all the memories I had here, and all the hard work and blood, sweat, tears that you know I put in into that court, and um, kind of just all flowed together at once, and you know, it was very emotional to you know hug all my teammates, coaches, um, you know, like I said, having my family by my side, and. Um, it's something I'll always remember for the rest of my life. For you and Connor to have games like you did, does that make it even more special when you have, you know, a really good game? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was almost like tonight was <laughs> scripted, you could say. Like, uh, our, our student manager hits a half quarter of 25. We're able to watch and celebrate with him. Um, we have an unreal senior night send off for myself, Connor, and Ash. Um, and of course, all the managers that were a part of the special team. And um, but at the end of the day, you know, we we had we had our emotional kind of time. And um, but you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, it was a great career. When I was walking off the court, and I was like, well, there's still a lot left here. You know, we have a lot of games to be played, and a lot of memories still to be made. You know, I I came back to you know try to get this team to um, places that no one thought we could be. And I think Connor will say the same thing. Keegan would say the same thing that. You know, we still have a lot left for everyone that's in there, and we continue to fight every day and continue to prove to each other that we are really together and deserve to be, you know, one of the best teams in the country. Can you talk about Jack's moment? That seemed to be like the feel-good moment of the year. Like I said, it was like a it was a scripted night. It was so I wouldn't say bizarre, but you know, we're up 25. We're all we're not even paying attention to the timeout. Our student manager shooting half quarters, like it was almost like an open gym and just it was an open practice. Really, I felt like at that point. But you know what? <laughs> what a cool memory for Jack Devlin. You know, he's put in a lot of work behind the scenes. All of our student managers do. You know, Luke Slavens, Alex Dickey, Jack Devlin. You know, they put in so many hours behind the scenes as managers that go unnoticed, and they're honestly one of the hardest working people. You know, in college basketball, and you know, I, I'm glad I'm really good friends with them because I think they're going to do some extraordinary things when they're older, and I want to make sure I have some good connections with them. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go into questions for Connor and Austin. So, Connor, do you think every three you take down is going in? <laughs> I mean, pretty close. Uh, there was probably like two that didn't feel great, you know, off the hand. Um, but other than that, I, I, don't, I think I shot nine. I was thinking I was five for nine. So, I would say like those, those other seven like felt pretty good. Um, What's the difference now? Is it just was it mental? I think it's just a little bit of mental. I think it's like mindset. Like I, I definitely have been a player over the span of my career, and it still even shows tonight. Sometimes I'm, I'm always thinking pass first. It's just how I am. It's how I'm wired, uh, and I don't think that's ever going to change. But you know, it definitely comes down to being more aggressive, thinking about it more, attacking the attacking the offensive areas of my game where I can you know where I can shoot, pass, dribble, whatever, and. Uh, and it's just like, you know, like I said, kind of like a mindset thing. Connor, or Austin, you are at the logo 40 feet away. You have a good pass to Connor. Connor immediately passes it back to you and you shoot it from there. So I knew he was going to make it. I knew he was going to make it. <laughs> what was going through your head, Connor? You immediately pass it back. You pass up a good shot. And Austin, you just shoot it from 45 feet away. He, well, I mean, he, like, I said this before, like, he makes that very easily. Like, and that sounds insane, but like, that's an easy shot for him. I don't know if, if everyone was here yet, but before the game, he, I don't know if you guys saw, but he probably made about 14, 15 in a row, almost from that exact spot, shooting absolute bombs. So I knew it was going to, that's why I passed it when I was screaming, shoot the ball. Like I was like, shoot it. Like when I passed it, I knew he was going to make it. But, yeah. yeah, no, when I checked in, Connor was like, I'm getting you one, I'm getting you one. Um, and we kind of reversed it, and they're like, shoot it, shoot it. I'm like, I'm, I'm deep. I'm, I'm really deep. <laughs> so the shot clock got to about eight or seven, and he's really good at throwing that pass right back. He's done that multiple times in his career, and then uh, it went down, thankfully. Did you guys think Devlin's shot was going into? Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest. He's been cold recently. <laughs> like, we've, we've, had practice, like, we've had practice rounds for him, and he's been ice cold. But, like, they're all right there. Short. Yeah, yeah, sure. He sure. can't get it there, but today, like, I think it was the adrenaline Definitely. got him. That got him there. I mean, swish. Second one. Can't make it up. That was awesome.
Austin, what was this moment like for you to, to hit that three, get a standing ovation from the crowd uh, with everything you've kind of been through throughout your career? No, it was really cool. Obviously, had the senior day last year, um, which was nice and everything, but didn't have the, the family at the, on the court and stuff like that and students at the game. So hearing the students chant my name and everything like that and having that moment with Connor on the floor I've been playing with since sixth or seventh grade. Um, and then Jordan and Keegan, obviously. So having that moment with the starters, hitting that shot in front of all my family that were there, it was really surreal. Um, it was a really cool moment. Connor, you was, touched on this a little bit, Nebraska, but you know you really wanted to make, make it a point to make you know, drive this team to the NCAA tournament. I mean, you guys are at 21 wins now. Obviously, a lot of basketball left in front of you, but just it's hard to reflect now. But just what has the season so far meant to you? Just as far as where you guys were expected to be versus where you are now. Yeah, this was. I mean, this was the goal from the from the beginning. Um, you know, I knew coming in that I was going to be one of the senior leaders along with Austin, along with Jabo, and we, I think we knew what this team was capable of, but nobody else really did. Um, definitely not a lot of people thought we would be here. I mean, I think most teams thought we would have a losing record. Um, and I think it just shows that a lot of us, a lot of our guys, you know, it's, it's all about being confident. Um, we have a good system. Like we all, you know, play play with confidence. Run. Um, we've been defending. Like Tony had five steals tonight. And, you know, it's just it's a lot of guys playing really well at, at the same time. And I think that it's just been a kind of like a it's been a really good year for us. We've had definitely some games where we haven't played well, but you know, we're we're a little bit inexperienced, and now we're kind of hitting our stride uh, going into going into the stretch run in March. And that was the that was the goal coming in. That was my only thing that I wanted to do was get this team to the NCAA tournament. Did it feel like your last time? I know you got a decision to make, have made the decision, but did it feel like to you like that's like your last game out there? Um, I would say like a little bit, yeah, because being out there with Austin, with J Bo, you know, the, the won a, we won a lot of games here, um, won, won a lot, and I just feel like when I checked out, like it definitely all kind of hit me, uh, hit me, hit me hard. I started you know, tearing up a little bit, um, and I just think. You know, just all at once, seeing the fans. See, I, I turned and saw my you know, my family, and my dad was crying when he hugged me when I checked out. Um, and he like he never cries like ever. I think he's cried like maybe like three times in my life. And like one of the, like the main ones was when Patrick had cancer. So like seriously, that's I mean he never cries, and he was bawling. So that that definitely got me. Austin, you know what you're gonna do? I do not. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Keeping the options open. There are kids in the state of Iowa who want to be like you guys, whether they're chucking up shots from half court, playing with your grit, tenacity, Connor. What does that mean to you, more than just making baskets and winning games? No, it means a lot, uh, especially for me growing up as an Iowa kid, um, watching guys like Jared Utah, Matt Gatons. Um, all those greats play, and that's what I came to those games two hours early, take a picture with those guys, watch them go through the same stretching routine that I'm going through now. So seeing those little kids come early to the games and try to get autographs after the games and knowing that they look up to me and just little things like that means a lot, and I take a lot of pride in that. So I always give those people the time of day, and um, it really does mean a lot, especially coming from Iowa. Yeah, no, just to echo, just to echo that, I mean, there are kids everywhere, you know, that every time there's a kid that comes up, wants a picture, wants an autograph, you know, whatever, you have to take the time to do it because they it means so much to them as it meant so much to us um you know and i think in iowa kids everywhere like we we got some good players in this state um you know like you know even like if you take me for example like i'm not you know i'm not the most athletic i i, I can't jump like keegan i can't, you know i don't have long arms i don't i'm not the fastest but like you know i play hard i'm really competitive obviously and you know i think that that's something that you know, it shows it shows other kids who may not be as athletic. Like, yo, like, play hard, play every possession like 100, percent and you'll have you, you, somebody's going to play you. Like, I promise. If I'm coaching a team, like, I'm going to play the guys that play the hardest at all times. I just am, and that that'll be the way that most coaches are. You're going to play your guys that are tough, competitive. You can rely on them, and that's that's kind of what I strive to be, and that's what I think a lot of kids in Iowa, you know, coming up. That's what they. That's kind of the the mindset that a lot of us have. Everything you've got in front of you is, is very serious business now. Michigan, Illinois, Indianapolis, the NCAAs. Uh, does it feel like you are ready, even more than ready? Yeah, no, I think we're ready. Um, obviously, two very tough games in the lead in the Big Ten tournament. Everyone knows that. Uh, two very good teams playing well. And, you know, we, we know we're going to have to play well. We feel like we're playing well. And, you know, 
you can we could still go up there and play well and lose like that's a possibility but we we know that it, it that we're still like you're still using these days to get better um you know the end goal is the ncaa tournament and we expect to go in and win but we need to be we need to be firing all, all cylinders we got to have everybody playing hard you know focus to the game plan locked in you know defensively offensively every possession and that those are the those are the keys going into these next two games against two two really good teams that it's going to be I'm, I'm i'm excited that's what that's why we that's why we come here that's why we play the games <coughs> all right thank you guys so Fran, how much fun was tonight? You looked like you had a pretty good time. Well, you know, every every senior night you want it to go well. I mean, uh, and it doesn't always go well, as you know. But you want your guys to play well. You want everybody to be happy. And, you know, topped off by Jack Devlin making a three a half court shot. It's just, I mean, you couldn't draw it up any better. Uh, and we played well. I mean, we out-rebounded them. We, we, we turned them over. Uh, a lot of guys, like with seemingly every game, a lot of different players stepped up and produced. You know, uh, I got a lot of respect for Chris and his program, and that team has played really well all year long. And uh, our guys were ready. Connor said, uh, I've only seen you cry a few times in your life, but he said you had some tears when you came out. What can you yeah. the emotions you had? It was, you know what? You think about it, Chad. You know, I remember the first time I took him to a road game with the team. He was little, and uh, said, "You know, we didn't know if he was ready." And, and he kind of came with the team. He thought it was great. Rode the bus, you know, went to meals, and came to shoot around. And then game starts, and he wanted to sit on my lap. So I don't think that's going to work. Uh, but uh, so he, he he got a pen. One of my assistants said, "Okay, every time out." You give your dad this pen, so that was his job. And he, so if I had to talk to the team, he sat, he sat literally right in the middle. You know, you think about that, and uh, all the times he came on those road trips, and then you know at Siena he was a ball boy. He thought that was the coolest thing. He could be on the court shooting him around, and then you know you wonder one day will he be good enough? Will he be able to to you know participate at this level? And you know, so for him. And for me, it was incredibly emotional. For his mother, she was bawling, you know, the minute she walked in the arena. So, uh, you know, it was just great to have, you know, my, my daughter, Mara, she's home from Villanova for, uh, for spring break so she could be here. So that was awesome, too. Uh, is Patrick all right? Still sore from that blow he took in the Nebraska game. Uh, he. He did some stuff yesterday. He even came in late last night, like around 9.30, and did some shooting and see how he felt. And he tried it again today. He said, look, I'm not ready to go. In reality, he, you know, he probably could have pushed through, but if he did, he'd be really hurting on Thursday. And then who knows about Sunday. So the only thing we can do is shut him down for a little bit and try to get this thing better. Northwestern was second to y'all in fewest turnovers, assisted turnover ratio, especially in the first half. Um, you were able to force them into a lot of mistakes. What did you see from, especially the perimeter? Well, I think in fairness to them, you know, Boo was sick. Uh, he would have made a big difference. Uh, I thought our defense was really good in doing what you said. You know, we created turnovers. We created some havoc. But, I mean, you know, Boo's one of the best guards in this league, and he was sick tonight. So, you know, others had to step up. You know, Ty Burry's a really good player. He played well. But you got some guys playing out of position. You know, when they're when they need buckets and they want to run stuff, you know, the ball's usually in Boo's hands. Beyond the, the glee that your players showed for that moment with Jack Devlin, it was striking how much uh, affection and, and uh, respect they all seemed to have for each other. Could you expound on that? Well, you know, when Jack first joined uh, you know, the, the Hawkeye basketball family. You know, he was a little bit shy, you know, he, he, uh, he wanted to be involved, but, you know, he didn't know anybody, and, and our guys really took a liking to him right away, and if you get to know him, uh, he's not shy for long. He, he has personality. He has a sense of humor, and so uh, I think immediately he felt part of the group. And, uh, you know, it all started with him shooting the half-court shots and the players going nuts. But, you know, little by little, you know, when he first started, he was serious about the academic program he was in. And then 
little by little, we gave him more and more responsibility. He was around more. Last year was really hard for him because he wasn't allowed to be around us as much you know, because of COVID. And, you know, so practices were nobody came and, and uh, so forth. So to get him back this year involved the way he is and, I mean, you know, the, the guys were developing strategies. The, you know, the guys, how they were going to rebound, how they were going to throw him the ball. You know, Patrick was his personal hype man. And then I knew as soon as that thing went in, the players were going to go nuts. And it's, it's truly genuine and, you know, just a great feeling for all of us, you know, for somebody so special to us. And then beyond that, I mean, when, when Connor and Ash and Jordan come off the court, the way the, your, their teammates responded yeah. to them. Uh, well, you know, they have – so much respect for the senior leadership of those three guys. They have been through it. You know, those guys are back. The other guys left. So uh, we got a good young core of, of players. But you know, even last year when they did get to play, there was nobody at the game. You know, so you need uh, those guys to be able to put their arm around them and talk, this is what it's going to be like. This is what we need to do. Okay, coming out of a timeout, we're going to execute, the, you know, we're going to be in this, you know, so that everybody's on the same page. If you're going to defend a team that runs all the stuff that Northwestern does, you have to be connected five as one. I say that all the time, but, you know, pitch, pitch, handoff, you know, curl cut, double away, open post, curl off the handoff and look for a layup. I mean, and then, Swing it, swing it, throw it in to Ryan Young, and everybody's cutting off of that. So, like, if you're not locked in, somebody's going to get an easy shot. Somebody's going to be open. And and these guys uh, were really, really playing at a high level, I think, physically. And they were working, and they were talking, and they were communicating. But uh, those three guys, you know, won't allow any slippage. And sometimes young players have it, but this group, you know, Joe T, Tony, Aaron, Peyton, you know, Chris and Keegan, obviously, they're, they get it. Fran, Tony's just playing at a different level now. Um, you know, can you just talk about his contributions a little bit? You know, Tony, Tony's active, you know, and when you play that way, good things are going to happen. He's got good feel. He can score. He can defend. You know, how about when we switch and he's guarding a big and they try to lob it, he jumps up and take, you know, steals. I mean, th those are court awareness plays that impact the game. He gets out in transition and is really effective. But, uh, you know, he's fiercely competitive, you know, and, and we always say, you know, you, you want to be like that, but you got to be able to control your emotions and think the game. And, you know, he's able to do that. You know, he was – Comes from Indianapolis, played for a great high school coach, played for a great AAU coach. Kid knows how to play. All three of the seniors are adamant about there is still more work to be done. When you think about where the team is at today versus, you know, the end of January, what can you say about the difference a month can make? Yeah, well, you know, this was a new team. This is this was, you know, we, we weren't sure what we had. You know, we thought we could be good. I felt like we were gonna be good, you know. I remember, you know, I said this to you guys before. We scrimmaged Bradley, and I went to the scrimmage. I had no idea what was going to happen. We played really well. I said, I think we might have a chance. And then, you know, we had an early season schedule with some games we thought we could win. Go on the road and beat Virginia. Okay, we got a chance. Didn't play well against Iowa State. Played really well against Utah State. And just as you go through the ups and downs, this team stayed together and stayed positive. And again, continued to get great contribution from a lot of different people. And that's what we've become. You know, any game, you don't know who's going to do what. But a good number of them are going to play well. I know that.